Paul Stanley formed Soul Station in 2015, a tribute to classic Philly soul and Motown music. The band is comprised of Paul on lead vocals, Rafael Morera on guitar and background vocals, Sean Hurley on bass, musical director Alex Alessandroni on keyboards, Eli Rise on keyboards, Eric Singer on drums and background vocals, Ray Yaslas on percussion, Gavin Roan on background vocals, Crystal Starr on background vocals, Lauren Beto on background vocals, and John Pappenbrook on lead trumpet. There are also three string players and two additional horn players. They are not credited anywhere I can find, including the official website. Which seems kind of stupid, they're a pivotal part of the band. I don't have my physical copy yet, thanks Bezos, but hopefully that credits them. The band played in clubs in the US and Japan. Paul was so happy with it that he decided to make an album. However, he didn't want it to just be an album of covers. He wanted to bring it into the present, so he wrote five new songs for the album. Paul produced the album himself alongside Greg Collins, who also worked with Paul on Sonic Boom and Monster. Now and Then was released on March 19th, 2021. Written by Melvin and Mervyn Steeles, the original was recorded by The Spinners in 1972. Paul's version keeps basically the same arrangement, but with a much bigger production. It's a fun and catchy song. I love the little guitar solo, and Roan's vocals are great. The album is well produced and mixed. It sounds much better than Sonic Boom or Monster. All the instruments have clarity and definition and blend together nicely. Written by Paul, this is the first of the five original new songs. I love the chorus and I think the could it be I'm living in a dream section is great. My one issue is that Paul's voice is a little weak. It lacks power and volume to a degree. He's almost 70. It is what it is. Written by Paul, this is the second original and the second single. I love it so much. The chorus gets stuck in my head constantly. It's incredibly catchy. The 5 o'clock in the morning section is fantastic. The sax solo is cool, and Eric's drumming is great. I think I've said before that Eric is my favorite drummer, so his involvement really got me excited for this project. What's funny to me is that the people that prefer Peter Chris, which is fine, feel what you feel, always say it's because the two Eric's are all technique. They don't have feel, which I think is utter bull, and I hope this album puts a little bit of that to bed. Written by Smokey Robinson and Pete Moore, this was a hit for the Miracles in 1965. A lot of KISS fans were, and are, understandably unsure about this album. For me, I enjoy this kind of music. I'm a 90s kid, so I'm also a fan of Seal, don't judge me. And when I was in high school, he released two albums that were comprised entirely of soul covers. I love those two records, and that's what got me interested in this kind of music. Also, I worked at Walgreens for about seven years, and a lot of the music that played was this style, so maybe Stockholm Syndrome finally just kicked in. This is one of the songs Seal covered, and I think his version is stronger. I love this song. It has a wonderful melody and great lyrics. Paul's version is solid. I actually prefer the a cappella version he did on YouTube last year. Written by Stan Vincent, this was a 1970 hit for Five Stair Steps. It was also notably featured in Guardians of the Galaxy and was the first single off Now and Then. It's a great song and Soul Station does a great cover. It's so much fun and a really catchy earworm. Roan shines again and I just love Eric's drumming. This is the third original song written by Paul. I love the tone and vibe of the song. The lyrics are great, and there's some cool guitar work. With a slightly different arrangement, this could easily be a Kiss song. Written by Norman Whitfield and Barrett Strong, this is a Temptation song from 1971. It's a very chill track. I like it. It reminds me of like a relaxing Sunday morning. Eric's singing is fantastic. More of that, please. 
This is the fourth original by Paul, and it's a duet between Paul and Starr, who is an amazing singer. This is my least favorite of the five original songs, but it's got a great chorus. Written by Robinson Moore and Marv Tarplin, this is another Miracle song from 1965. This song was my introduction to Soul Station, thanks to the video of them performing it live on YouTube. It's an incredible song with fantastic lyrics and a catchy chorus. Paul's version feels a tad too slow. The live video was better. The original was a 1971 Al Green song written by Green, Willie Mitchell, and Al Jackson Jr. I love this song. Seal's version is a lot better, but Soul Station does a solid cover. Although, like Tracks of My Tears, it feels just a hair too slow. The original was a 1968 song by the Delphonics written by Tom Bell and William Hart. It's a really sweet song with a nice chorus. I could definitely tell that the original was a big influence on Seal. It sounds a lot like his stuff. Paul's cover is solid. I love the instrumental section after the second chorus. It sounds really big and powerful, almost like a film score. This is the fifth and final original track, and I think it's the best song on the record. I love it. The background singers individually echoing Paul is really cool, and I just love Eric's voice. The guitar parts are cool as well. I think it's an incredible song, reminiscent of something like Hard Luck Woman, but also very different. The original was a 1971 song by The Stylistics, written by Bell and Linda Creed. This definitely played at Walgreens constantly, although I think it was a cover. I'm not crazy about this song in general, so I guess Stockholm Syndrome didn't completely take over. Paul's voice is a little weak again, but there's a great guitar solo. Written by Brian Holland, Lamont Dozier, and Eddie Holland, this was a 1964 hit for the Four Tops. It's a really catchy and infectious song. I was instantly singing along. It sounds like a big kiss chorus. I've seen a lot of people treat Paul with some skepticism as he has expressed his love for this kind of music. Having listened to this album and going back to the originals, yeah, I totally get it. Like, I hear it in a lot of Kiss songs now. Clearly, a lot of their vocal harmonies were taken from the Beatles as well as Motown. I think if you're a Kiss fan and you're unsure about this, the litmus test is what version of Kiss you like. If you love Dynasty and Unmasked, you'll love this. Songs like What Makes the World Go Round and Easy As It Seems would be right at home here. If you prefer the heavier stuff like Creatures or Revenge, you'll hate this. In terms of criticisms, Paul's voice is the weak link, which is a shame. Mostly, it is fine, and there are even moments of greatness. I think IOI was chosen as a single due to it having some of Paul's best singing moments. But there definitely is a lack of strength that hurts a lot of the songs, which really need a great, emotionally resonant voice. And while most of the covers are really good, I've either heard better covers, or they're not as good as the originals. What makes the album truly worth it are the five originals, four of which I think are great, and Whenever You're Ready is still really good. Save Me and Lorelei are two of the best things Paul has written in a long time, better than anything on Sonic Boom or Monster, and I loved Monster. It's honestly depressing. I think Paul once again proved how immensely talented of a writer he is, which is frustrating when you think about how little he has written in the last couple of decades. He is too talented to have spent all of his time touring nonstop and barely creating new music. Overall, I have to say I really like the album. And before anyone comments this, yes, I can enjoy this and still not like Peter's 1978 album. As I said in that review, my issue is not the style or genre, it was Vinnie Poncia's dorky production and the lackluster songwriting. The originals on this, I think, outclass all of the original tunes on Peter's album, with the possible exception of I Can't Stop the Rain. And yes, it is smaltzy and cheesy, but fuck you, I really needed this right now. It made me feel good. 
I think Eric and Starr are the standouts and MVPs of the album with stellar performances throughout. It's a collection of great classic songs performed well with the added bonus of genuinely impressive new songs that I know I'm going to listen to for a long time.